Hello, it's been a while. This is Eli here. Um, I wanted to just go over this one because a lot of people get this wrong um, on GIMP. Uh, there's a really good tutorial on Photoshop, but uh, GIMP, um, when people try to do it, they don't get this right. And what we're going to do, we're going to apply facial hair, or we're going to apply more facial hair than there was originally. I mean, that's the original. That's what, and, you know, you can make it appear, a beard appear more full and natural. How we're we going to do that, I'm going to go over it right now. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of this layer, right? But what you do, you have an original image. You start off, you add a new transparent layer. The transparent layer, which sits above the other layer, um, will uh, hold all the extra hair that we put on. There's a reason for that. There's a very important reason for that, and I'll show you later on in the um, in this uh, tutorial. But what we want to do is draw our first facial layer. You've seen these tutorials. They're out there. Uh, but um, I've already got a hairbrush, but I'm going to create another one for um, completeness sake. So I'm just going to zoom in. I'm going to choose a small brush, maybe about nine. Let me just go to nine. Okay, I've got jitter on. I've got all my old settings. So I'm going to remove some of these because I'm going to reapply them as we're going along. Now, smooth stroke is important. Okay, that's better. Okay, good. Now, we need to make that smaller, evidently. So I'm going to go to about five. That's looking more like it. Now, for, for the color, you just want to grab the color from existing hair. So I'm going to grab one from uh, where it is thick on the beard over here. And the other one uh, for, the for, for the background color. And the background color is used because under color options, you can blend the two if you want to. Um, but the other one I can get from a mall. There we go. So I've got two, two different shades of hair color. Let's go back to the drawing board and try and get that original hair to look good. Um, let's um, put the hardness down a bit. Okay, and we need to make it smaller, I think, still. I'm going to also put the opacity down. It looks a bit too dark. I'll put opacity down further. Okay, that's looking a little bit more accurate and similar to the existing hair. So for my purposes, I think that's sufficient. Now, we want to make that into a brush. Grab a tool to select it. Simple. And it's sitting on its own layer, so I'm not selecting anything else. That's all I'm selecting there. Uh, so I grab that, um, select, no, edit, we cut that out first. Then we can paste it as a new brush. That's the key to creating a brush. Okay, give it a name that's appropriate. Now, if I go to um, the new brush that we've created, uh, was it this one? I believe it was this one. Okay. Now I've got opacity down, so I want to put that back up. Uh, let's, well, what did we have it at? And also maybe they reduce the size a bit. Okay, that's kind of reduce the opacity even more. Okay, I think that looks reasonably accurate. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, I like that. It looks like the other hairs, no different, yeah. Okay, now, where people get it wrong is when they, um, randomize the hair, uh, the angle of the hair. There's very few angles here. There's ones that are going almost straight down. There's ones a little bit off to the left. There's ones a little bit off to the right and um, not much in between those. So if we choose just four different angles to do this, that's all we're going to need. So without further ado, let's just get into it. Um, firstly, I'm going to say, um, 
apply jitter, which is going to create that effect where it just kind of goes everywhere. Okay. And under dynamics, go color from gradient. Um, okay, I think that's that's it. There's all your settings there. If any of yours are different, um, just try to follow what I've got in there. Because um, GIMP remembers what your settings are last, so um, I try to try to just keep in mind that you want these approximate settings now. Of course, for size, for angle, for, well, for a lot of these, it's going to be different based on the image, right? Depending on, on the image. Um, the size of hair follicles, this is rather large. For most, it'll be smaller than this. But look, let's just continue. Let's apply. So you can see that just applies a whole bunch of hair. Don't worry if you get stray hairs. It's okay. I'm just going to apply a whole bunch. Don't overdo it. Um, I'm going to make the... Um, amount of jitter a little bit down. Make the brush a little bit smaller as well. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to just add a few more bits and pieces here and there. Now we're going to change the angle because that angle is obviously excessively overused here. Tilt it a little bit one way. Sorry, that's the aspect ratio. Be careful you don't do that. It's not what we want. Okay, this one's good for there. Um, maybe if I make it a little bit bigger. Whoops, let's make the jitter. A little bit. Okay. Let's make the um, angle the other way now. Okay. Add a few more angles. I've just had a lot of hair there and there's a lot of stray hairs there. That's fine. Because the last bit of this is the tidy up, right? We grab a brush as such and we begin to remove the extremities. Okay. And that just suddenly makes it look a lot, lot clearer cleaner. Have a look at that. That looks absolutely realistic. Um, you, you would not know that, um, you know, unless you look at it with a microscope and you really start to see. But once you once you go out to that zoom level, it's um and you know, all your work really should be done at that at the most zoomed in level uh, because you always um, save at a somewhat at a reduced level. All JPEGs online are displayed at a somewhat reduced level than the original. So for the purposes of getting um, an ordinary picture looking 
a little bit more uh, the way you want it. Work at the granular level. When you when you pull out, it looks uh, a lot more realistic. Now, this is what we did to it. This is the original. So you can see the amount of hair we added onto it, right? Now, it's on its own layer. So what's really handy is that we can reduce the opacity all the way down. Or if we, so if you've overdone it on the hair, you can um, either undo the extra amounts that you did or just use the opacity toggle. So if I only, if I only want to go halfway, I can go to 50% and then check this out. Okay, that's good. So it just adds a little bit more hair and it looks real. Hopefully that was beneficial to you. Um, I'm going to go over a few more things um, in a couple of more tutorials. Um, I think a lot of people have been finding some of my videos um, very, very handy. So if you have any questions or you want to learn how to do something else, please just feel free to ask and I'll just knock up a video. It only takes me a few, few minutes to do. Thank you very much.